This is about using wicked problems as an aid to learning. The first question is, what are universities for? Now, there are probably more answers to that question than there are people on the globe, but most people would probably have some sort of idea that universities are there to make the world a better place, something of that sort. And at that sort of vague general level, people can get agreement. But when it comes down to the detail, we don't actually agree. A couple of years ago, um, the vice rector of a Dutch university said to me, the problem with universities today is that increasingly we live in a complex world with complex social problems, but in universities, we keep making the problem simpler. So, in order to get our students to pass their exams and get out at the end, we basically trivialise the world's problems. And she thought that this was the wrong way to be going, that somehow we needed to have an education system which enabled students to cope with complexity, to cope with the difficult situations that the world faces. So, what are we about? Um, the particular things I want to talk about are using problem-based learning as a means for tackling these complex, wicked problems. And why problem-based learning? Well, there has been research which suggests that for dealing with complex situations, the PBL approach actually aids understanding. So what you're trying to do is get the students to understand what it's about, not simply know a lot of facts. If you're using problem-based learning, as it has been in medicine for quite a long time, it's still possible to come up with simple problems as opposed to wicked problems. Quite often in medicine, there is a temptation to say, well, we must draw on all sorts of medical disciplines in framing a problem, but what then happens is you say, you come across a, a woman lying in the street who's unconscious and her earlobes have turned purple. What do you think is wrong with her? What might you do about it? And clearly the person setting the problem has an idea in his or her head of what they want to find, the students to find. So cerebral hemorrhage, for example, may be the answer they're looking for. A lot of the problems we're dealing with are ones where there isn't an answer. This is again a, a wicked problem that there are no right answers. So how do we deal with that? Well, we've run two types of course unit. One dealing with sustainable development, which is, by its very nature is complex and which draws on different expertise. And the other looking at humanitarian aid, which is similar overlaps with sustainable development to some extent. So what you're trying to do there is to frame a problem which has different solutions for different people. If you're looking at removing mines from Angola, then you may find the local government wishes you to demine the fields so that the farmers can grow more crops. The United Nations may want you to clear the roads and bridges so that they can bring food in. Simple dilemma, but which one do you go for? How do you justify which answer you go for? And of course the situation is very much more complex. That's just a simple example. So the way we operate in this particular case is to give three or four scenarios which increase in complexity as a student goes through the course unit. And they build up experience in looking at several different people who might want an answer in analysing the risks as well as the economic benefits. And gradually, you tackle the complexity. But at the end of it all, there are no right or wrong answers.